Carlos, uh, deuces wild bitches. Coming to you from greater Prairieville, Louisiana, and greater Wyoming, wherever the hell you are in Wyoming. You can't say nothing about backwoods, by the way, Jack. Yeah, you're right, Thrill. I am as backwoods as it gets here in Grand Targhee, Wyoming, where there is the Western Regional Ski Finals in which both of my kids, uh, Chloe, excuse me, Chloe's in Alaska. She made the U16 Western Regionals, which is out in Alieska. And then Callie and Colton both made the regionals for uh, the Far West team and Grand Targhee is the reward. So, dude, dude, you got it. You got it going on with the kids. Look, you uh, you here with a few of them, and then Tara's up there in Alaska partying it up, getting her some uh, king crab legs and all of that. Yeah, she's got a good setup over there, man. So I, it, this is cool though. I mean, it's you looking out. I mean, I literally am in the middle of fucking nowhere. Um, I, my ent- my entrance, uh, I you know usually when I say you know produces <laughs> wild bitches or motherfuckers was a little more subdued today, figuring that I have a neighbor here and a neighbor here, and they're probably going to hear through these thin ass walls anyway, and be like, "Who the fuck is staying next door?" Hey, to just me? piss them off, hell with them. So, well, uh, where you want to start? Because we got. Stuff are happening. You want to start with the Gigantes and Snell, or do you want to go bananas? All right, let's do this because yesterday, Thrill, I was driving out to Wyoming, and Biscuit turns to me, and he (laughs) said, the Giants just signed Blake Snell. I about drove the van off the road. Yeah, I'm like, here yep. we go. So, you know, I mean, you and I talked about it. Everybody in the chat room knows it, all right? You know, it's no secret that, you know, the Giants needed starting pitching. They're not going to get uh, Cobb back for a little while. Robbie Ray's after the All-Star break. Uh, you know, we got Logan Webb holding down a number one spot. And then all of a sudden, some of the kids that we needed to, to step up, I mean – uh, Tristan Beck's hurt, had an aneurysm in his arm, had to have surgery. Sean Hajele, you know, he had a he had an outside shot. He's got a bad wing right now. Keaton Wynn literally just got in the ball game. I think it was yesterday for the first time since beginning of spring training. And, you know, there was no secret that we needed starting pitching. And to go out and get the reigning NL Cy Young Award winner, that's huge first off. Uh, second off, I, I'm just sort of shaking my head going, why couldn't we got this done three weeks ago and let him, you know, ramp up his innings and all that sort of stuff. Why did we get him with one week left in spring training? But it is what it is. He's on the squad. He's going to, uh, he's going to definitely make a huge impact. And, uh, you know, now you, you look at the giants and we were talking, yeah, you know, you know, we're going to have a pretty good year, you know, guys coming back, different attitude, Bob Melvin, Matt Williams. Now all of a sudden you go, oh, wait a second here. We got number one and number two in the Cy Young Award voting from last year heading up our rotation. All of a sudden out of clear blue, it's looking good. Thrill, this changes everything. And we were on here last week talking about the Giants' issues within their pitching staff. And... We both recommended, hey, look, there's still two dudes out on the market, be it Snell and Jordan Montgomery, that have not been signed. And sure enough, Farhan goes out there. The ownership group steps up. They sign him to a two-year deal. They're going to pay big dollars, obviously, in the short term. But I absolutely love it. The place is here. The time is now. If you take Snell... You back him up with Logan Webb, and then down the road, Thrill, if Robbie Ray, who just a couple years ago won a Cy Young Award, is able to come back healthy and firing, this is a team that is a legitimate contender. Not just to make the playoffs, 
but I truly believe they could give the Dodgers a run for their money in the National League West. Now, do a lot of things have to go right? Does Robbie Ray have to come on in and contribute right away? I would say right away, but but definitely come back to that Cy Young form. Sure, but if you're handing the ball to a dude where you know every fifth day you're going to be favored or damn near close to it if you're on the road, yeah, that means you have a legitimate shot to win. Every one of those guys uh, between Snell and Webb and Ray, those guys are going to give you a chance to win. There was a saying that we used to say when Bob Melvin, it was when I was in Arizona, uh, would have we Brandon Webb would be pitching, and Bob would so conveniently call the team meetings that say when we were struggling, when Brandon Webb would take the ball. Why? Because it was fucking windy. Well, guess what? <laughs> it's win- it's going to be windy with Logan Webb. It should be windy with Blake Snell. And it should be windy with Robbie Ray. And again, a lot of things have to come, you know, fall into place. The offense has got to produce. You got to play D a lot better than they did last year. Right, 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 uh, I, right. I think this whole thing is really promising. If you're a San Francisco Giants fan, you should be thrilled. No, I, I totally, I totally agree with you. You know, I'm, I'm right there with you on every every facet that we just touched on. One of the things that nobody talks about in baseball anymore, and they used to talk about it, was the pitching matchups. All right. So as of right now, Logan Webb's been there the whole spring training. He's so he'll he'll start out being number one because he's got his innings worked up. Okay, you got to plug Snell in there. Um, you know, and then whatever. Uh, and then, uh, you know, Marty even brought it up about Kyle Harrison. What this does, as far as rotation goes, you can start pushing guys back. So you got Webb going one. You got, you know, uh, Snow going two as of right now. Whenever Robbie gets in there, he'll be three. And then you push Cobb and Harrison back to four and five. And so you're going to start getting better matchups against your fourth and fifth starter. And I think, you know, kind of what echoing what you just said, I think it's a great, great deal. So thrill. I mean, that's exactly it because I don't want to rely on a Kyle Harrison or one of these other young guys to go take on another team's number, you know. No, yeah. You don't want to, you want to throw him in the fire and take on somebody's number two starter. You know, I mean, no, he's no. he's still getting his he's still getting his feet up under him. But you know, if you plug him in a four or five slot, you know, that way you can get your feet wet, get comfortable, and then hey, pin your ears back, son. Let's go, let's go. Now you know what the big leagues is about. Get after it. Yeah, I think that's what makes this so exciting because when you can have a young pitcher and good young arms, and you don't have to rely on them. Yeah, they they. They will continue to stay hungry. They will continue to develop without this extra added pressure where, I mean, it'd be the same thing as an offensive player thrill. I know even your first year when you came up, what were you hitting in like the six hole? Uh, I started, well, I started out two and then uh, as the season went on, I dropped down to seven. Okay. Yeah. So and then, and then I came back, I came back in 87 and I was all over the board in 87. I mean, I hit, I hit anywhere from leadoff to eighth. So I mean, and then '88 was the first year after my after my first two years in big leagues. '88 was the first year I jumped in the three slot. So. Sure, but now if they had just fired you into that three slot from the get go, not to say you couldn't have handled it, but that's you know that we're asking a lot, and I don't yeah, no, no. I don't think you want to ask that. I think it's no, like, and and you know it was it was actually pretty comfortable for me because like. Perfect example was like 87, you know, like I said, jumping around all in the order and all that sort of stuff, you know, but mainly being the seven hole guy. I mean, I racked up 35 and 91 and kind of everybody was not looking at me because I wasn't in the middle of the lineup, you know, so yeah. it wound up it wound up being a, a blessing in disguise before I jumped in the three slot in 88. Well, thrilled. So did you get any... Did you have any inclination? 
I mean, obviously you work for the Giants, and it, it's no, this came out. This came out the clear blue. Um, matter of fact, Josh is in the chat room. I was, I was um, on my laptop uh, yesterday. Uh, Lisa and I were sitting there watching some uh, some uh, movies, and then all of a sudden, out of the clear blue, it popped up on my laptop. I hurried up and took a screenshot and I sent it to Josh. I'm like, "Oh God, check this out!" And uh, you know, so you know, I'm I'm just I'm just so happy right now. I mean, because you know, there were a lot of doubts. I mean, a lot of doubts with me on the starting rotation and can Jordan Hicks do it? You know, is he going to be able to stay there and get the innings in and all that sort of stuff? This actually might free him up to go back into his bullpen role and, you know, chunk out that 9,900 mile an hour heater every now and then. Yeah. So thrill. Let's look at this for a second because I, I, I want to pull the article up or not even an article, but I'm, I'm looking at the giants off season moves so far. I, I mean, this is wild to, Think you're talking about like you talking about like transactions? Yeah, dude. Like it, it's you know, I mean they were they were super big because I'm looking at all the money they spent. I'm trying to find the article here, but they spent like four hundred million dollars, man. Yeah, and they spent I, I get it. It's not it's not the billion that the Dodgers spent, but they also said we're gonna put our money where our mouth is and we're gonna go out there. And we're going to do everything we can do to give the boys a chance to win. And that's what's so cool when you see Bo Mel and Maddie Williams and uh, you know Ryan Christensen taking over with this staff. And all of a sudden, dude, we're going to be able to see a team that should compete. Yeah, exactly. Without a shadow of doubt. And, you know, that's what I think the fans are waiting on. They're waiting on, hey, what's going on? Why, why are we not getting in the mix here? Um, yeah, we signed, we signed Jung Ho Lee, you know, and, you know, then it was really nothing going on. And then, you know, like I said, when I was in spring training, they signed Chapman. And then all of a sudden, now we got Snell. It's like, whoa, wait a second here. Now all of a sudden, like you said, they, you know, spent $250 million on basically on three people. And, but, those pr- three people are going to transition us into being more competitive throughout the year. Yeah, well, let's go over this because the first big splash that they made was Jung Ho, Ho- Lee. Is, is, am I saying that right? Yeah, yeah, you got it. So the, fir- the, fir- yeah, the first big signing was Lee. Then the next big one was actually Jordan Hicks. And we thought that was it. This was going to be all that the Giants do in the offseason. But wait, there was more because they went out when they saw an opportunity to get Matt Chapman at a discount. They signed him. And then the big enchilada, dude, uh, Blake Snell still on the market. Uh, As you and I talked about last week, I love the short-term deal worth a lot of money, 30 plus a year it will be for Snell over the next two years, but he's earned that. That's what yeah. the reigning Cy Young Award winner should get paid. Look at yeah, all no. the other salaries in MLB, and the top pitchers are making 30 to 40 million dollars a year. So Snell deserves it. But guess what, Thrill? I don't I I like Blake Snell. I don't want to rely on him six years, seven years down the road and still be paying him 20 to 40 million dollars. I will take his services for two years. And if he's fantastic, hey, you know what? Maybe we try to do another two, another three, another four, whatever it is. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, I agree. But, you know, now just the dynamic of the team has changed. It it was for a while there was a big question mark as to what we were going to do starting pitching-wise. Bullpen's been doing a good job. Um, you know, what was it going to happen as far as starting pitching was? And then now all of a sudden that question is answered. So I'm happy. Hey, quick, quick question. because we brought his name up and we didn't talk about it. How did Lee look when you saw him, when you were out in Scottsdale? So 
that was that was the one thing I you know I was expecting more of a kind of a slap and run guy. Um, this guy's got a little juice. I mean, he actually he actually hits the ball with some authority, and uh, you know he's still going to sacrifice a little power to make more contact, but still at the same time, um, I was real happy at what I saw. Uh, his batting practices were really good. Um, Spray ball all over the field, line drive type of approach. Uh, you know, if he gets up under it, he, he like I said, he's got a little juice to get it out there. And I did not know this. We had talked, and that's my fault because I bashed him a little bit on his speed, but he was actually running real well. Evidently, he had a bad ankle last year, and that's why he couldn't run and didn't get no stolen bases and stuff like that. So he was actually running pretty good when I saw him, uh, you know, in spring training. So a lot of talk about how Boris fucked this up for his clients, whether it was Chapman, uh, Snell, obviously, Montgomery still out on the market, Cody Bellinger. Am I the only one that doesn't look at it that way? I mean, I guess if you made the argument, yeah, sure, overall value of the contract. But I bet if you take these short-term deals that all these guys sign for a large AAV that's average annual value. And then we go five years down the road, which were, they're all looking for those five to seven year deals, which they didn't get. But I have a feeling if they go out and just perform near what they should be doing, if you look in five years from now, each and every one of these guys makes as much, if not more money than they were projected to get, even though Boris didn't solidify it this off season. You know, that, that's the one thing. That's the one thing. And and my dad, my dad used to say it. And uh, also my agent used to say it is like, you know, if you go out there and you produce, you're going to get what's coming to you, you know. And so some of these contracts can actually be backloaded. If you go out there, you do what you're supposed to do. Dude, you're going to get paid in the, in the, the second half of everything. So, uh, you know. Like I said, I mean that's about all I can say about that right now. I mean, I'm I'm kind of happy at at the way everything's going. We just got to make sure we keep everybody healthy because we have used the disable list or the or now they call it the IR, whatever it is. But they have used it more than anybody in Major League Baseball last year. So we got to get people to get out the training room, get on the field, and do their jobs. Oh, man. Um, have you talked to anyone within the organization? I got to imagine your phone was blowing up yesterday. Yeah, you know, you know my, phone, phone, my phone was blowing up. My phone was blowing up yesterday and this morning, you know, because everybody heard the news. Um, but it wasn't anybody from the team. It was all my buddies that were all happy for the Giants. So, uh, you know, put it this way. I mean, today is the 19th. I will be in San Francisco for opening day. So, you know, I'll, I'll have a chance to put my eyes on everybody, sit down and talk to people. Matter of fact, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm just telling you this right now. I'm going to go talk to Snell um, and say, hey, look, you know, I was in the era of collusion and what happened with you and negotiations? Did negotiations come to a standstill? And if he says yes, that's definitely some sort of collusion. If not, if they were, you know, two or three teams were always in the mix, always in the mix, they couldn't get the money right. Well, that's a different story. Yeah. So Tony Clark apparently was on a call with all the MLB player representatives, and they are not happy. They Oh, I bet they're not. I bet they're uh, not. So there's a, a chief lawyer, essentially, or director that works under Tony. Uh, Tony's really the voice of the players, right? And then he get, surrounds the players with the right legal team. But they are looking to replace him with the guy that actually helped unify the uh, minor leaguers and unionize the minor leagues. So I obviously believe that the players are super frustrated over this. I think more than anything, it's... It, it's the fact that we're this late into the year and you had the number one pitcher in baseball, the Cy Young Award winner, obviously not signed. Like, that's that's the big issue. And 
you could argue whatever you want about the money. I, I still, I have an alternative view to that just because I think uh, the short-term contracts uh, are, are better. I, I do. I, I think it's, it's, it gives the player an opportunity to earn more down the road. They're obviously not nearly as secure, but I, dude, like you can't fucking wait this long and not sign the Cy Young Award winner. No, uh, I, I totally agree. I totally agree. You cannot have like the biggest cherry out there and somebody not pluck that son of a gun. That, that, it, it's, it raises way, way too many red flags. It was it was reported that Matt Chapman was offered a hundred plus million dollar contract by the Blue Jays. It was reported that Blake Snell was offered a hundred and fifty million dollar contract by the New York Yankees. Yet neither one of those guys signed. I, I'm also going to tell you that the market really got distorted when the Dodgers spent $300 million on Yamamoto. Oh, time well, yeah, an, aber- yeah, yeah. an aberration, but, right? But here's another thing, too, all right? Yeah, they, they spent the money on Yamamoto. They also spent the money on Otani, but they did it early. Yeah. They did it early. They did it, you know, kind of in that time frame you would think, you know, because they wanted to come to spring training, have everybody rock and roll. All of this stuff, you know, this late, late stuff like this, I'm just not too sure about it. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. And then the, the other thing is that it, it kind of seems like it's the Dodgers and then the rest of the league, but the Dodgers also found a way how to play it smart because the one issue with all this spending becomes a luxury tax, and then these guys are getting penalized. So not only is it costing them whatever it is for the player, but it's, I don't know, 50% more on top of that. It, well, they did the deals that they did. Well, they they signed Otani for two million dollars a year. Like that's what he's making. It's two million bucks a year. So, you know, two two plus two plus the uh, the sixty eight that's going to come down the road. But in the short term, they're fine. And you know, this I I don't know exactly how the Yamamoto deal is structured, but I just feel like it's the Dodgers are playing in a league of their own, and then it is everybody else and nobody wanted to budge and there are some issues with tv contracts thrill there are some a lot of these tv contracts just went fucking dead man i mean they had uh these deals signed in which these networks pulled out of them and they don't have the money they went bankrupt so it was multiple eventually everything's gonna be streaming i mean it's, it's just a matter of time where uh each team is just gonna stream their own shit and they're gonna you know ideally use the no filter network uh, engine <laughs> to do it. But what, you know, with, with all of this, uh, I, you know, it's just, so it's, this is one of the weirdest off seasons that I could think of. In By a, far, a, re- By far really, without, really shadow of doubt. without a shadow of a doubt. So. Um, okay. So just while we're still on this, before we get to the bananas, this is in the New York post that the giants bolstered their playoff chances by signing Blake Snell on Monday, but they remain big time long shots to come out on top in the National League West. The Giants up their preseason win total from 81 and a half to 83 and a half. It, you've seen that before. It happens basically with any starting pitcher. If you sign a plus starting pitcher, a legit top end guy, your win total will go up two. And it shortened their playoff odds from plus 175 to plus 150. I'm telling you right now, playoff odds, right? Because they potentially could win 83 games and still make the playoffs. And that at plus 150 is easy money. Go to your local casino. Go to your bet online app. Of course, I will get that title sponsor read in here shortly. But lay the money on the Gigantes at plus 150. Why thrill? Because this team is making the fucking playoffs. There is no doubt in my mind. It says the you, franchise. You gotta, is- you gotta you gotta think about it this way. I mean, one of the reasons why spring training is so freaking early this year is they added another round of playoffs. So by the Giants shoring up everything, they got a better shot at making the playoffs. They they actually even though it kind of sucked ass last year, they were they were 
not too far away from, you know, making it if they got a little hot streak here and a little hot streak there. And so, you know, yeah, I, I mean, with the way baseball is now and the way, you know, these wild card teams can make it to the freaking World Series and all that. Hey, look, man, it's anybody's game. You just got to get there in freaking September and October. All right, so check this out. The Giants, they signed Matt Chapman, Jung Ho Lee, Jorge Soler. We haven't even talked about him. Robbie Ray and Jordan Hicks. You go ahead and add Snell to that mix. And the Dodgers are still a minus 550 favorite to win the NL West. You got to have some balls to put your money on the Dodgers for this one. Well, you know, I mean, you know, it's it's the it's more of the media hype and the media build up. You know, I mean, and I mean, I hate to say it, but it's whoever comes out the gate quick and kind of stays that way over the course of the year. But the one thing that we have seen and it happens, just check out the history in baseball. Injuries will derail a season. So, you know, yeah, you can put them down as going to run away with it, but. If they have some major injuries, uh, oh, hang on one second. There's other good teams in this division. So check this out. The Giants were at plus 1,400 to win the division. That's 14 to 1 odds. So they're now plus 1,000 to win the division. They were plus 2,500 to win the National League pennant. That drops down to plus 2,300. And their World Series odds were plus 5,000. That's 50 to 1. And they've dropped to plus 4,500. That's another bet that I would make. Hey, you're the gambler. I'm not the gambler, all right? All I know is we're sitting a lot pretty, a lot more pretty than we were a few days ago. So Snell has the eighth best odds of repeating as the NL Cy Young Award winner. I like as plus 1800, I take that bet too. Webb, the Giants opening day starter has the third best odds at plus 1100. Lee, San Francisco's new center fielder currently has the second best odds that's plus 600 to win the NL rookie of the year trailing Dodgers pitcher Yoshinobu Yamamoto at plus 175. Okay. On that note, before we transition, Thrill, it just seems very appropriate that we get to our title sponsor here tonight. Here we Bet go. On, on baseball. Oh, no. Sorry. The tournament is here. Opening day is around the corner. Bet Online is your bracket headquarters for the season with the best bracket contest out there. Odds, lines, and info on every game and every round right up until the national championship in three weeks from yesterday. You can access the most up-to-the-minute wagering information anytime from your desktop or your mobile device. And even track your bracket real-time all the way through the tournament. Head to Bet Online today and get in on all the action. Remember to use the promo code BLEAV. Capital B, L E A V for your fifty percent welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online. The game starts here. And and as Linda just so eloquently put it, Pete Rose approved. Of course, it's Pete Rose. This show is (laughs) Pete Rose approved. He's in Vegas doing something with it. You so, know what? We got we got to get Pete Rose on here. Uh, you that'd be, that'd you and Pete get along? Uh, Pete, Pete and I get along fine. Yeah, but of course. He, he'd be crazy. So, hey, so thrill. So you're I'm wearing like- yellow, and I'm wearing yellow. And mine has a little double deuce. It's got a Clark 22 on the back, all that sort of stuff. Your boys took care of D thrill. Um, Man, it was it was a lot of fun. It it really was. I mean, Adam left tickets, you know, for the family and friends and stuff like that. And then, big shout out to my man Bryson. He hooked uh, myself and TC up with a lot of fun stuff. Uh, 
pretty cool, pretty cool deal. You know, I've never seen the bananas in person. Uh, this was something completely eye-opening for me. Uh, you know, if you're a baseball purist, eh, it's kind of not for you. But if you want to go out there and have a lot of fun and see the kids screaming and yelling and acting a fool and all that, dude, you got to make a Savannah Bananas game. It was – and, and you know, the, what, what I was just saying, it's like – it's almost like baseball on steroids. I mean, it's because, you know – you got, you know, we're out there, you and I, we're trying to just catch the ball sometimes because it's being hammered to us. And these guys are out there. They're not worried about catching the ball as much as they're worried about catching the ball and then flipping it behind your back, between your legs, throwing it and all that sort of stuff. And uh, it was it was hysterical. I mean, I saw, you know, behind the back catches, off the glove catches, you know, around the back catches. It was, it was, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun to see. Um, you know, the energy behind the Savannah Bananas. The one thing that my message was to all the players out there is like, look, dudes, you guys keep doing what you're doing because not only is this good for baseball, first off, but look in the stands. I mean, the stands were just jam-packed with the next generation of baseball players and baseball fans and all that sort of stuff. It was a ball, man. I was I was so happy to be there. Did you have a chance to take BP with them? I did take BP. Uh, we got rain. We got rain the second day, and so I went and hit in the cages with them. And then the third day was just a straight cage day anyway. So I went down there and hit some more. Trey Trey Clark. He got ah shit. I don't know. They kept throwing him back in practice. I don't know. He might have got two hundred swings in. He had he had a ball oh, and. You know, I also got a chance to talk to some of the dudes, you know. And so, like, you probably know this guy, red-haired guy, acts the leprechaun on the party animals, right? Yeah, I like, yeah, I like him. Yeah. I yeah. like anyway, him. He's a so, little leprechaun, yeah. Yeah, so first day I'm watching him, you know, just pay attention to the game. And they're just flipping up these sliders on him. And then after they get him down in the count, then they try to work him with the, with the heater. So, you know, next day I get in the cage. I'm like, hey, man, why, why don't you swing at one of those hanging sliders? And he had this, like, blank look on his face. And I go, they're going to flip them up there to you all day long until you start attacking them. And I said, why don't you, you know, get up there and beat them a few times on freaking sliders and then go from there. They'll, sw- they'll switch up their pattern on you. I'd be goddamn if I didn't even get it out of my mouth. First, that bat little get me over slider and he whacks a double in the gap. You know, and I see him in the dugout after that. He's giving me the old thumbs up. I'm like, yeah, that's what I'm talking about, brother. Did you get a chance to watch from the dugout? We were in the dugout the whole time. Trey and I were in the dugout the whole time. Saw everything top to bottom. And I did not miss a trick. Not a trick. I love the fact that here you were in the dugout watching the game. And it's re- it's real easy to get caught up in the semantics of everything. But, and this is what these guys love so much. It's the intricacies of the actual game of baseball. And the yeah. fact that you were paying attention to them just throwing those spinning get me over sliders to get the ahead of the count on the little leprechaun on the party animals. I mean, dude, he'll never forget that. I mean, yeah, number no, one, no. just the information, but number two, the fact that Will Clark was paying that much fucking attention to what actually is happening in the game. Yeah, and, you know, and, and some of those guys, you know, like I said, we're in a cage, you know, and they're like, they're like, how you know all this stuff? And I said, you look at the game from one way. I look at the game from a completely different way. I'm trying to figure out his patterns. I'm trying to figure out what side of plate he goes to. Trying to figure out if he gets his butt in a ring or what pitch does he go to. And I said, I figured that out in literally like three innings. Done. I yeah. got it. You know, here's another one. I, here's another one. I swear to God, I told him this. I go, dude. I said, and I had, I don't know, I had six or eight guys standing in the cage. I said, I, I've i never had this happen. I said, but I tell you what, I would pay money to go up to home plate and have that big jumbotron on all the time. And they looked at me and they go, what do you mean, Coach Clark? And I go, dude, you can see where the catcher's set up all the time. I said, all you got to do is look up on the board. Oh, he's set up away. And they go up there, whack one. 
You know? Oh, shit. It, they were like, we didn't even pay attention to that. I'm like, that's the first rule is, is hey, look, if it's right in front of you, figure out where you set up. Wow. And they were, yeah. they were like, they were like blown away that I could even think about that. And I'm like, that's, you, you just helped me out because I don't have to, I don't have to worry about, all right, thinking about, hey, you set up a way. No, I can look on the screen. Yeah, you set up a way. Dude, I want to say it was Travis Kelsey who had caught a ball or thrown a block. Like something happened. It was a gigantic play. It was in the playoffs this year. And you could see him looking at the Jumbotron. Yep. Yeah, I know. I think, when you I think it was. I, I think it was a play, the game-winning touchdown that was caught in the corner of the end zone, and Travis Kelsey is like watching it on the jumbotron. But yeah, yeah that, that's a if they're gonna play that live in real time like that, I bet you it's, it, it's just a matter of time before you know, major league players make sure that shit ain't happening. Yeah, no, 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 no. You got you got that right. You got that right. But, you know, here's another one, too. You know, I mean, they begged me and begged me and begged me to go out there, you know, and get in that bat. And, look, you know, I, I appreciate everything that they did. But I told them, I said, look, I said, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart. I said, I had my freaking time in the sun. I said, it's time for these guys to shine. I said, people came to watch them play and them do their, you know, trick plays and all that sort of stuff. They didn't want – they didn't come to watch some has been get up there. You know, matter of fact, the week before they came to Baton Rouge, they were in Houston and they had Roger Clemens go out there. Roger Clemens gave up five. Somebody took him up on the freaking train tracks. So, yeah, they they don't don't even have our old has beens get out there and do it, man. I was just there to support them. Well, here, this is my take on it because I would tell you. I, I know what you're saying, but I'm going to put my fan hat on because I feel the exact same way. And I was very reluctant to take any at bats when I was managing slash playing, whatever it was. But I will say that number one, the dudes love it. So let, let's just yeah. start with, you know, the like we play the game. Sure. There's the, there's the fans and everything, but before we even get to the fans, Like, the guys in the fucking locker room, the guys on the field, the guys in the dugout, they would have loved nothing more than to have given up their at-bat for you. So, Oh, no, no, no. I I wasn't going to do that. I wasn't going to do that. But they they want to see it. So so that's that's one thing. I have always petitioned, though, whether it was me or any other celebrity that you put in there uh, that comes in, they need an extra spot. And so it, it actually bothered me. I would not put myself in because I didn't want to take myself out. And so one of the big things that they did was, and this was in Kansas City last year, um, they basically, I, I, I went from third base coach, called time, took the bat out of the guy's hand, like, yo, you're done, dude. I yeah, got get you. out of here. Get out and of here. I, Give like, me a helmet. Like, yeah, and then we we like switch helmet. He goes he goes out, coaches third base, and so I pinch hit myself, and I I ended up getting a knock, which was pretty cool, and obviously it made for some good theater. But I don't want to take like I never wanted to take somebody else's at bat um, from them. So I do think that if you do if they do do that, because they get they make up their own fucking rules, right? Yeah, they could do yeah. whatever they they could do whatever they want to do. <laughs> if you were going to go into a game, they could just put you in there for one AB or whatever it was, and, and you know, you do what you do. Now, with Roger Clemens, and it gets a little bit more difficult. I do know he pitches all the time, though. I've heard this, at least, right? He likes to throw to – he throws to his sons. He's, he throws to the UT players. You know, he's out there doing what he's doing. So I think he probably felt like he was prepared. That said, as you know, after you just watch these guys, they ain't fucking around, man. Like, these guys – this is like a double-A, triple-A type level – and these guys are good. In this game, I, and I don't know how you felt. It would be interesting to get your take on it. Because you are watching, you know, the double-A, triple-A guys. But, like, the one thing I noticed when I got back around it and I was managing the Bananas, I'm like, holy shit, man. This game's fast. Like, yeah. it, the, the game, you know how they say, like, when you, you yeah. know, the game slows down when you get really comfortable within it. All of a sudden, you start seeing – 
95 mile per hour fastballs again, you're like, dude, that looks like 110. Yeah, no, no. And then one of the things, and, you know, I told a lot of the guys, you know, when we were in the cage, we were hitting and shit. I said, you know, I said, I said, I'm going to tip my cap to you guys. I said, one of the things that for me personally is the most challenging about what you guys do is not the theatrics and the dancing around and all that is the fact that you guys literally you're on a clock. I mean, like, and there's no blocking in banana baseball, just let y'all know. So, I mean, there's all kinds of shit going on. Guys doing backflips on a mound and he throws a ball and he'll do a handstand. He'll throw a ball. There's all kinds of shit like that. Right. But the thing is, there's so much shit going on. Like, like, I mean, these guys, you know, they'll score a run and everybody's out there dancing at home plate and you're dancing and all that. And then all of a sudden, dude, like two seconds later, the guy's in the batter's box. And to flip that switch on and flip that switch off, that's tough to do. And man, I got to, I, I told the dudes, I said, I got to tip my cap to you guys. I said, you know, to get, to get from that, freaking I'm going to go be an entertainer to switch that mode into the baseball guy and get serious. That's tough to do. Yeah. Part of it actually makes it easier. And I say that in the sense that in baseball, we can mind fuck ourselves a lot when we have too much time to think. And so when you have that music going and you're forced to not step out of the batter's box, it is just going and going and going. You tend to, react as opposed to try if that makes sense sometimes we try too hard in this game of baseball i get what you're saying i get what you're saying yeah so but all yeah all of that said dude these guys are dealing with a lot man yeah and yeah so, you know, so here's, the- here's one thing all right so you and i talk about it you know we've we've had the conversations in the garage and i'm hitting in the 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 you know the cage and all that sort of stuff um you know, one of the things that I was showing these guys in the cage was, hey, look, you know, you can take this pitch right here, and if you just move around the batter's box, you can hit the pitch that way, that way, or that way, if you just move around the batter's box. And they were like, what? And so, you know, I would take the T, and I'd just leave the T there, and I'd scoot up on a plate a few inches, and I'd whack a few in the left, and then, you know, I'd scoot up or back a little bit and I'd whack a few in the center and then I'd come way up on the plate and I'd hook a few in the right center. And they were like, we never thought of that. And I go, that's kind of the next level type of shit. But you guys, and this is, this is what I told them. I said, you know, I got all day to prepare for these four or five at bats. You guys are freaking dancing, you know, you're fielding, catching ball behind your back, all that sort of shit, you know, and then you got, 30 seconds where you really got to bear down. And so, you know, I get it. I get it with these guys. You know, it's it's tough to do. Yeah, they do have the advantage of facing the same fucking pitchers every Yeah, day. they do. And, <laughs> it's not, and that's, that's the great part. That's the great part. And this is where I came up, you know, talking talking to my man, the leprechaun, and also their, their big burly number three hole hitter. You know, it's like, dude, you face these guys all the time. You know what they throw. Why does this shit surprise you? Why do you keep taking these sliders when he's already thrown you 10 of them? Look for one of them. Whack the shit out of it. And it's like, oh, geez, we didn't think of it that way, Mr. Clark. I'm like, yep, that's it. Yeah. yeah. So I imagine the burly three hitter is Jake Skull. Uh, that's him. That's Georgia. him. Jake. Jake, first round draft pick of the Texas Rangers. Played a bunch of yep. years in minor leagues. And then uh, – Decided to switch modes and became a linebacker at the University of Georgia for four years. And then after he got through with that, they approached him about coming back into baseball. And now a Savannah banana. So a lot of these guys, I mean, you know, they had pretty impressive resumes. There's a guy, you know, over there with the uh, with with the party animals too. He was a a two way All American at Mercer. Um, he was a pitcher and a, and a position player and, uh, all American at Mercer. So like I said, you know, like you said, double A, triple A level, they, they had some talent running around out on the field. So oh, you look by the way, that. by the way, we didn't even talk about this. All right. There are certain guys that are dedicated for this and that. 
There's one guy, yeah. he's a straight dancer. Machio or Machio? Macio, Macio. Macio, Macio. Macio. Yeah, all right, all right. All he does is dance. And this yeah. fricker can move, dude, yeah. right? So they brought LSU's dance team out on the field, right? And oh, these little cool. girls were freaking getting it. I mean, they're freaking getting it. He went out there and in you know, I, hell, I don't know, they because they had rehearsals. He wasn't out there a half hour. He knew their dance, and then he pulled off their dance in the middle of the game while they're out there too. And I mean, he freaking rocked it. I mean, rocked it. And then there's another guy by the name of Ziggler, and his his big deal is balancing shit. I mean, he was balancing twenty pound baseball bats and. People were bringing stuff out of the stands, and he's balancing. He had a freaking uh, plastic table that I would eat crawfish off of. He's balancing it on his head. So, I mean, you know, it's the bananas uh, definitely have a niche in baseball for sure, without a shadow of a doubt. They're bringing a ton of enthusiasm and love of the game of baseball and making it fun, and everybody in the stands is having a blast. And they are creating our next generation of baseball fans and baseball players. You had a chance to share a adult beverage with Vincent, the dancing umpire as well. He sent me. A I did. Call. I did. Put it this way. I brought two cases of Coors Light into the locker room. One of the umpires didn't drink. So I brought him some Sprite and I brought a, Jack Dan- a bottle of Jack Daniels in there. Uh, Vincent, the, the dancing umpire, Enjoyed his Jack Daniels. I made him a nice drink. And then uh, I think a little bit of everybody enjoyed the beer because two cases of Coors Light went pretty quick. So did you get the sense of, because you were there for three days, did you get the sense of what it was like with the high and then like the after the game, like, all right, so so you're gonna you're gonna laugh at this one, right? So this is like I said, this is just, I mean, full on high energy, which is you, yeah. which is definitely you. All right, okay. For me, after the game was over, you know, had a few course lights, you know, let the traffic die out. We get in the truck, Trey and I, and I said, "Hey, Trey, would you mind?" If we don't turn the radio on, I said, I need a little peace and quiet for a minute. And he's like, me too, dad. (laughs) I'm like, game on, dick. Bro, so we we would finish a weekend. And Kowalski and I, we we call it Sunday swings because we'd play on Friday and Saturday night. (laughs) We'd have Sunday off and we'd travel back and we'd get to the stadium. And it was exactly that, dude. It was no music. We'd go out to the ballpark. It, Kowalski would throw me batting practice, and I'd take 200 swings, and he just loved throwing BP. I loved taking BP. And that whole day, and then it was, was just this gigantic, like, <sighs> decompress. Let's get, back to, uh, let's get back to normal. You got that right. You got that right. I mean, it, 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 put it this way. It, 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 they play every song on the face of the planet over the course of the game. So when you get in the truck, you just like, ah, I just want to, I just want to chill for a minute. And you've never, uh, yeah, you, you've never appreciated silent sport because it, the, the music never stops. If you notice at the bananas, like you'll never hear the music stop. Never stops. Never stops. And If I could tell you how many times, guys, I've never seen this before. If I could tell you how many guys guys take their shirt off and put baby oil on and all that sort of shit, I'm like, what the hell? Are we like at Chippendales or something like that? What's going on here, you know? So Yeah, but we're definitely part Chippendales. Yeah. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I even asked him. I said, said, hey, look, do y'all have to, when y'all do, you know, auditions for this shit, do y'all have to have a dancing background? And they're like, no, we can't dance. We we just learn this shit as we go. I'm like, all right, cool. They, They do a really good job. Now, the crazy thing is that, like, DR Meadows, is the guy that will do the backflip catches in center field. Yeah, he, he did he did one and then he did a few behind the backers and he also 
He also made one hellacious full-on layout catch in right center. I mean, it was really good. It was it was a, a definite, uh, you know, espn -er. Well, dude, he you know he was like a 6'2", 6'3", 60 guy. Like yeah, he can he can motor. I, I saw that he can motor. I, I, it's it's crazy because you you see somebody like that, and I I, I don't remember how well he hit. I, I'd I'd have to go back and look or whatever. But you see him, you see Reese Hampton, who's a party animal center fielder, leadoff guy. He's so yeah. fucking talented. He played in the minor leagues. I yeah. called AJ Hinch last year. I said, look, bro, I'm like I think you guys missed on a guy. I said, not a big deal. He was with the Tigers. And if you look at his numbers with the Tigers, like there were nothing impressive and they ended up releasing him, and he was there for, you know, two, three years. Um, he had one year that was pretty decent. And then he went to the Atlantic league and in the Atlantic league, I, actually, I take that back. Then he went to play for us and he went to Atlantic league. Then he went to play for us. And then I got to see him play. I'm like, dude, you need to be playing pro ball. And then he went back to Atlantic league, killed it again. And I'm, I'm saying, like 370 fucking homers, bags, like all of it. And he's, yeah, you know, yeah, he's good. Like, he's a good little player. He's a good little player. And he's dude, thrill. He's not a he's not an everyday guy. He's not an everyday big leaguer. I get it. But to to have that guy as a as a fourth fifth outfielder, like switch hitter, uh, runs like the wind. Man, you know, I I, I would take him. I, I've, I've seen I've seen the competitive at bats, and again, like you, you'll never know until you see these guys playing on a regular basis what they can actually do against big league level pitching. But I do think there's several guys, you know, who have. The, there's, uh, I, I can tell you this right now. All right, you know, and I'll just be absolutely blunt about it. You know, there's a few guys that that can play some pro ball. Um, there's a bunch of guys that. If they get pitched a little tough, they're they're going to have their ass handed to them. Just just they don't they don't have the skill set yet, but they're working on it. But then they're also doing you know the acrobatics and all the rest yeah. of the crap that they're having to concentrate on. They're not able to concentrate on just the baseball end of things. Yeah, no, you're right, dude. You're right, and and it's there's you know half the guys I you know I would I would tell you like they would never have a chance to play pro ball. Yeah. And I would say yeah, the other half, yeah. like never, ne never. They're just you know, physically not there. Um, yeah. So, so Linda, like, Linda wants, skills. Linda wants me to answer the phone every now and then when it, when it rings. Cause she wants me to, she wants me to tell off a telemarketer. So you guys can hear it. Normally, normally I am the guy that like screws with them. I'm like, hello, are you doing? Can I help you today? You know that that kind of shit, and yeah, I was they're say, like, "Can we talk to Mister Clark? Uh, you got him. Can I help you?" Oh, I love it, dude. Um, thrill. I don't know if you know this, but the wait is over. Baseball is back. You ready for this? Set your alarms because the Padres and Dodgers square off Game One of the Soul Series on Wednesday morning at. 3.05 a.m. Pacific time. 6.05 a.m. Eastern time. Thrill, it's 5.05 a.m. Will the Thrill Backwoods, Louisiana time. Will you be getting up and watching the Soul that Series? That would the Dodgers be and the a negative, good buddy. I am going to see so much baseball over the course of the year. I don't need to get up, butt crack the dawn in order to see some. I mean, this is happening. You got Tyler yeah. Glass now going up against you, Darvish. And typically how these series will go, you they'll go and play, right? And then they'll come back and they'll play a few more spring training games and then they play more regular season games later. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't know what base, Major League Baseball is doing. It's like, you know, why would you have to go play somewhere, come back, and then play spring training again? No, once the season gets underway, season's underway, you dumbasses. You know, my, Jesus, I, I swear to God, I don't know what the hell freaking MLB is doing. They're a bunch of idiots. Oh, and by the way, in case you guys do not look at a calendar, in case you don't know what day it is and all that, happy first day of spring to everybody oh, yeah. today. Today is yeah. first day of spring, so happy spring. 
Happy spring, everybody. The Dodgers lineup, Mookie Betts, Shohei Otani, Freddie Freeman, Will Smith, Max Muncy, Teoscar Hernandez, James Outman, the Sarah High School product, Jason Hayward, and Gavin Lux. Dude, that lineup is fucking loaded, Thrill. Hey, they all get out seven out of ten times. There you go. Uh, the Padres... Xander Bogarts, Fernando Tatis Jr., Jake Cronworth, Manny Machado, Ha Sung Kim, Jerickson Profar, Luis Camposano, Graham Pauly. I don't know Graham Pauly. Jackson Merrill. It's another one I'm not too familiar with. So uh, the Padres are going to be making a run for this thing. I mean, look, they're not going to lay down. I mean, this is a team that should be competitive as well. You know what? I, I already told you. I mean, you know, the, the divisions, the divisions challenging. I mean, you know, Padres, they, they got their they got their moments, and then you got the Diamondbacks who made it to the freaking series last year. So yeah, I mean it's it's interesting. So um as far as the Giants go, Josh just asked, um, you know, who's Spencer Bivens? Bivens was uh in double a with us last year came to camp and uh was one of those guys that came over and i guess you want to say you know threw for us every now and then in case we needed a body kind of thing and he did such a good job that they they gave him uh, a few starts so he's doing that and then also uh mr tankersley uh i am on retirement time right now it's i don't know maybe nine in the morning during hunting season, I'm up early every day because you never know when somebody's got to go get in the woods and whack something. So, as you can tell, Mr. Burns checked out of the chat, so he's probably having a little uh, little issue here. You guys fire some stuff up in the uh, chat room, and I'll answer. Put it this way. We got a guy who's in uh, Trey's... Um, 18 and over beer drinking league, and his name is Tankersley. So I wasn't going to mess that one up. So, Marty, it's good to see you in the chat room. Uh, I hadn't seen too much of you, so glad you're here. Linda and Nora, always, always good to see you guys. Josh, you're pain in the ass. I know where you're coming from. Tommy Luke, I hadn't heard from you since uh, we started all the craziness going on. So where are you at right now? So. Oh, that's a good one. Rennell. We forgot about that one. All right. So according to the Giants website, the San Francisco Giants and Rennell Moon, like, parted ways. Um, that is kind of a good way to say uh, she was a free agent and might have priced herself out of her uh, – league and the giants decided to go in a different direction so that's kind of the old thrill reading between the lines right there so never know we'll see yeah i'm glad you're here tommy you you hadn't chatted in in a while normally you you pop in with a question or two let's see what else can we talk about Oh, you know, Bernsey, Bernsey was talking about, you know, being in the cage and stuff like that. You know, the thing about these guys when they get in cages is they don't work for a purpose. They get out there and they just swing, 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 hit line drives, hit line drives. Oh, here he is. He's back. And when a pro, a pro gets in the cage and he's hitting – He's in there for a purpose. Like, I'm trying to hit a specific spot in the net, like, every time. I'm not trying to hit in a general vicinity. And so that's kind of the difference in between pros and, you know, guys who are, you know, not up at that level yet. So, sorry, I was uh, answering questions in the chat room while you while you have had the video difficulties. Yeah, I'm sorry, dude. I, I actually, it was a thousand percent on me. I did not plug my computer in, so it died. And then, 
All right. Yeah, plug it back. We're up and rolling. So we got uh, Marty, by the way, who's in Yeah, there. yeah. Marty Marty was – we were just talking to Marty and then uh, old Wes Tankersley. He uh, he chatted in a few times, answered a few questions of his. Marty, Josh, Marty. Josh is always in here acting a fool. Tommy Luke came on board. Linda and Nora doing their normal thing. I can't believe Battleborn ain't been in. What the hell is wrong with Battleborn? Dude, he's flaky. Marty, he must be working. Up, man? How are you? Oh, he was there. Who was that? That was Marty. I just pulled him on the screen, man. Come on, Marty. Jump back in. God damn it. There you are. There you are. What's going hey, on, Marty? So... Should the Giants keep Matos up and think about getting rid of Slater? They should definitely keep Matos without a shadow of a doubt. All right. As far as hand-eye coordination, I compare him to, like, uh, Panda back in his prime. He is one of the the best eye-to-bat-to-ball hitters that we have in our minor league system. His big thing was he needed, like, a game plan. He needed to – Say, hey, look, you know, they're trying to do, you know, this to me this time, and I'm going to drive the ball and drive in a few runs. He, when he was a younger player, he'd just swing just to put the ball in play. And once they gave him a plan, we had a chance to talk to him a little bit, then he's gotten better and better and better. And he and I had a, he and I had a pretty good little run uh, in spring training. He actually hit a hanging slider. Uh, and hit a three-run homer in spring training. And so the next at bat, he comes up there, and he, like, looks at me, and I go, hey, anybody can do it once. I said, do it again. And he, like, looks at me, get a big smile on his face. I said, you think they're going to throw you another slider? He goes, yeah. I said, so do I. I said, sit slider and hit another one. He started laughing. I'll be goddamn first pitch slider. Whack, he hits another one. He comes in. He goes, trill, trill, I got two, I got two. <laughs> That's so good. So good. I, it, so I imagine Matos is having a pretty good spring. So right now, right now he is tied for the team lead in homers. He's got three. He's hitting 286. Uh, he doesn't he doesn't strike out much. He'll strike out a little bit. But um, yeah, I mean, as far as like a guy that puts the ball in play, which is what you know the statistical guys want they want the you know the balls put in play and swing ratios and all that bullshit um he is uh probably our best in our whole system marty you got anything else for thrill no i'm done that's it man i mean it just you know your first time well here. good seeing you marty yeah hey, good see you guys hey you got a nice house thank you marty where you live man uh about five minutes from portola valley Seriously? You know, no, I, I grew, you know, I grew up in Portola Valley, Marty. Yeah, I know that. And and my kids played baseball. Does does the name uh, Coach Sutter ring any bells? The greatest coach I ever had in my entire yeah. lifetime, of course. Yeah, Tom and uh, we're good friends with the uh, Sutters and the uh, Fidelis. That's great. Well, uh, yeah, please, uh, please send my love to uh, both of them. I saw Bob not too long ago. He was driving out of a Sacred Heart baseball game, yeah. and uh, we, yeah, we were we were out there working out. But yeah, just I mean, I, I was I was very fortunate uh, to to grow up at that time and and have to have some good mentors like Coach Sutter and, and, and Bob Padelli as well. So, can you validate the uh, the story that Sutter made John Gall cry on the mound in Little League? <sighs> I never took Gall as much of a crier, so I'd be, I'd be shocked. But I, I could ask him. So Gall, you know, Gall's my cousin. So it's we could, uh, we could definitely get him on to answer that one. Gall is he? Gall was good, man. And, and the fact yeah. that he was two year, he was two years younger, and, and legit. But the one thing about Tom Sutter and Thrill, I'm sure you probably have had a coach like this before, but he was very stern. And he had, he spoke with a tone that was just, you know, if, if you have, if you're not used to it, he's going to freak you out. So every other team in the league hated him, but when you were on his side and when you played for him, I still to this day will say he was one of the greatest coaches I ever had, but he had his phrases like 
Two fingers on top. You bet. And I will validate one story here, Marty, before we let you go. Uh, Nathan Anderson and I were the middle infield double play combo when I was 11. Nathan was 12. And we had won the game like 20 to 1. And the one run scored because we somehow botched it. I'm going to assume I botched it. But it was like a ground ball to second base. Go over the flip to Nathan Anderson. Maybe the flip was off or whatever it was. Uh, He misses it. The run scores. So afterwards, we had to stay until we completed 100 double plays in a row. Oh, my God. 100. And this is 11 and 12 years old. I absolutely loved it. My mom was in the outfield just, like, losing her mind. She couldn't believe, are you ready yet? Come on. I'm like, Mom, I can't go anywhere. So, yeah, it's just still – you know, he taught me about discipline, accountability, and yeah. I was able to carry that on with the rest of my life. Yeah. Cool. All right, Marty. All right, Marty man. Oh, Take care of yourself, brother. Hey, join it. Join join every week, Marty. Come in with a new question. I love it. I will do that. All right, buddy. See ya. All right. So we got a, we got a few ones. Uh, Linda's out there. Is Tommy your oldest friend, Will? Yeah. Tommy go. Tommy and I go back to. Uh, eighth grade year at Jesuit. We uh, we were in the same class together. We were on the baseball team together and all that. And then old Josh, the J Toro right there, he uh, he and I met my rookie year through Mike Kruko. And then he and I uh, were roommates and uh, we, had, we had a lot of other um, players that came and lived with us. We had a rule. Josh and I had a rule. No, you didn't have you didn't have to worry about any, you know, dues or nothing. The only thing that you had to bring to this whole situation was make sure that Thrill has cold cores light in the refrigerator. And so that's it. So that's that's the Josh and Tommy story. And then uh, let's see, is Pablo out? Wes is asking us. I can tell you one thing. Um I don't know if he's out because he hadn't been sent down, but he's not getting a lot of at bats. So that's kind of a foretelling, shall we say? Um, oh, yeah, Marco what, Luciano! Marco Luciano! Here we go. This is an interesting one here, Alex. All right, so uh, Luciano, needless to say, one of our top prospects. Um, in my honest to God opinion. He got rushed to the big leagues last year way before he was ready. He came into spring training this year, got hurt, and then started from behind the eight ball. And uh, they went out and got um, got our man uh, Nick Ahmed from ex, uh, ex-Diamondback. Nick's been tearing it up. And Luciano, it up. Uh, yeah, Luciano's trying to find some at-bats, and he's hitting like a, a buck 20 or something like that. So – I hate to say it, but he keeps on that pace. Um, Sacramento might be in his future. Yeah, Thrill, let's get into the shortstop battle for the San Francisco Giants. You got Luciano, who many thought was going to be the starting shortstop, taking over for Brandon Crawford. But Nick Ahmed, the former Arizona Diamondback, has come in and balled out. How do you see this one shaping up? So, so yeah, I mean, Nick, Nick has come in. Uh, he's a man on a mission. He, he wants the job. He didn't come in here, you know, just, just to talk, to, to be a Nick Ahmed of all. He came in here cause he wants a job. And, uh, I mean, I hate to say it, Marco, man, you got to pick up the pace, brother. You got to pick up the pace because, uh, you're getting outplayed right now. And, uh, you know, old Nick saw a little crack in the door and he's in the process of kicking it open. So, the Giants were trying to give you the job. The job is to go out and play every day, and the job is to learn every day. So, uh, hope hope you're uh, getting these lessons in. Uh, it might not be at San Francisco when you get these lessons in, though. Well, it's real. I love that man. I I do think that. 
Luciano, if he's not having a great spring, and then you throw him into San Francisco and he starts off slow, you're going to send his ass down. On anyway, why not send him down? Set, set, give him an opportunity to get right. Ahmed's proven he's ready to play. Like you said, he is a man on a fucking mission. So yeah. the good thing is, is that if Ahmed struggles at some point through the course of the year, Luciano's on fire. Call him up. Let's go. Yeah. But yeah. No. Right no. now. And, that, and that's the thing. That's exactly the thing. I mean, if you look at if you look at Luciano, all right. And I am just going to be perfectly blunt here. If you look at Luciano, he was hitting 218, 220, 225, whatever, and got bumped up to AAA. He was in AAA two weeks and then got bumped up to the major leagues. And it's like, oh, wait a second here, you know? I mean, honest to God, you got to freaking rake. You got to rake. If you're not going to rake, uh, people can jump in your grave. And, uh, you know, he came out right now. I mean, we can go we can go to the stats if you want, but he's not exactly raking right now. So, you know, it, it would not be a bad thing for Marco to have a full year in my leagues. And the reason that I'm saying that is because – he has not had a full year. He has had a lot of injuries at every level that he has been at, and he has not strung together five or 600 at-bats. He's had 200, 250, yeah. you know, and, you know, I love him to death. He's He's got a great humor. Um, he actually, when he gets out on the field, he works hard. But you got to give him those reps sometimes. A, a, a young kid – needs those reps and needs to know what it means to make it through a full season. Thrill, we're in the midst of the high school baseball season. You mentioned Jesuit High School. You mentioned your teammate, Tommy Luke. Uh, you got a story for us that could, uh, I don't know, just shake things up a little bit here on Deuces Wild. Oh, your good, high Lord. School days. good Lord. Tommy, Tommy and I had a lot of fun. We were um, – Tommy, Tommy came, Tommy came on a little bit later uh, than I did. I was a uh, member of four back to back to back to back state championship teams. It was it was district and then legion. So we won, we won each year, and a uh, lot of studs on our team. And then uh, you know Tommy's junior year and my my junior year and our senior. Year, Pickings were a little thin, but uh, we still found a way to get out there and have some fun. Did you always play first base? I did until my senior year. Uh, we added some injuries to some people, and they needed a center fielder, so I went to center field my senior year. And then the last time I played outfield after my senior year in high school was on the 84 Olympic team. Mark McGuire – uh, was playing first base. His coach, Rod Dado, was our coach for the Olympic team. So Mark was going to play first. So in order to get in the lineup, I had to figure it out. And I, I wound up easing out there in the left field. And you and I talked about it before. I had Oda B. McDowell in center field, you know, from Arizona State. Oda B. could yeah. cover some freaking ground. And, uh, you know, I looked at him a few times. I'm like, Oda B. And he's like, what? I go, I'm going to be over here by this white line. You cover everything over there. <laughs> so good. So good. Oh, uh, Odeby McDowell. I told you I wanted to name my fourth child Odeby. It there was you go. Be Chloe, Callie, Colton, and Odeby. I mean, what a great yeah. name. Yeah, Tara would, Tara would freaking go for that any day of the week. You're going to have to, you would have to get her trashed one night to get her to agree to that. I don't, I don't think that was happening. Um, all right, Thrill, anything else before we get out of here? I mean, we're an hour and 25 minutes in. I got 30. Well, here's one. Here's one. Linda Linda just brought it, Linda just brought it up. I mean, you went on a freaking big old rant last week about Trevor Bauer, and uh, now signing Blake Snell pretty much puts all of that to rest, I would imagine. Yeah, I, I, I will also tell you guys, 
that I sent Theo Epstein a text. <laughs> I wa- I wanted to know. I said completely off the record. Would you sign Trevor Bauer? Now he's with the Red Sox ownership group, so he's not making those exact decisions. He would just be approving a contract. But I was curious to know uh, what the resistance would be. And obviously we know what the resistance would be, but uh, you know, if he comes with baggage and you know, look dude, the reel that we made last week on the show, uh, it's gotten a lot of views and there was a lot of back and forth and comments. I, I mean, hundreds and hundreds of comments real on, on that. I'll send it to you, but you know, it was overwhelming, um, overwhelmingly split between the two. Uh, right. As, as simple as that. So, right. I, you know, again, like, and still he's, he's out here, he's on side. Apparently he was going to be throwing against the Yankees though. Uh, so that, you know, again, just another shot. You got to keep getting out in front of people. Dude, you, wanna, you know you what? You know people, what? And, and Hey, look, look, you know, you and I have talked about this before. We've let so many people back in the sport that had no business being in the sport. This guy's got a little stuff still left in the tank and, He's already said, look, you know, I apologize. You know, I did my penance, you know, all that sort of stuff. I just want to get back in a sport. And so, you know, we had that discussion last week, you know, and I mean, I hate to say it, but he's going to come with baggage. And does the organization want to have to deal with the baggage in order to get the talent or are they just like, Screw it. We'll work with from within. And, you know, you and I talked about it, and I, I told you, you know, we got a bunch of guys coming up through the system, and then whammo, we signed Blake Snell yesterday. So pretty much shut that whole rumor mill down. Yeah, I just got – I think I just got to be a contender. Yeah, obviously the Giants aren't signing him now. I, but then again, he also doesn't – he's not going to cost a lot of money. So yeah, no. The potential no. – you know he's this guy's gonna make major league minimum, and I you know if hey, you're uh, a, a, contender, hey, well, a contender that has that that has holes, just a contender that has holes. That's I'd yeah. be willing to do it. Now if I don't good. think I'm gonna contend. I'm not dealing with the fucking headache. But if yeah. I do think I'm gonna contend, and I do think you know he can make. I mean it's a, it's a two win difference. He if you sign Trevor Bauer, that potentially could be a two win difference. And we talked about. You know what that could mean down the road, right? Every yeah, no, I get it. I get it. I get it. Hey, uh, Andy Mo, every time you come on here, all you do is talk about the Braves. All right, get oh, over. I love that. it, Amo. I love get it, Amo. Over them. They were they were the organization that I paid money to hit off of, even when they had the good freaking pitchers. All right, just get over it. All right. Hey, Mo, hey, you're you're put it this, put it this way, hey, Mo, You guys got ready of. You got rid of Freddie Freeman. How fucking brilliant is that organization? Well, yeah, but they brought in Matt Olson. So it was pretty much an even swap. Ah, fuck him. Yeah, you just, just you have to hear about the Braves. You know, get down there in the South. Hey, hey I, I swear to God. Team. I swear to God, before, you know, you and I, I don't think we've ever talked about this, but before – uh, the Braves, you know, got on the roll with everybody and all that sort of stuff. The first few years I was in the big leagues, when you went to Atlanta, there were like literally like 2,500 people in the stands. You could hear the people and their conversation, what the, what was going on while you were on the field. It was, it was eerie how quiet it was in that stadium. And then all of a sudden, a few years later, you got 40 something thousand in there. So. Yeah, shit, shit, shit. Oh, those are the days of uh, go, dude. Rick Mailer, Gene Garber, all of those guys. So. Well, they you got a roll? Playing on team. Yeah, I got. I got to go. I got. Did they close a the restaurant at nine o'clock, dude? So I, I and, and I'm, I'm literally thirty minutes from civilization. So yeah, well, like you I better, you better get your ass in the- gear, then, Jack. Well, it, on t- most importantly, there's no alcohol here. So I got oh. to go to the restaurant to make sure oh. I secure. The thrill has no problems with that down here, Barry. Oh, I love it. Uh, 
Yeah, dude. So I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed the bananas. That's fucking fantastic. I'm just so awesome. excited about the Blake Snell signing. I, I can't wait for you to meet him. This is remember, I was going back and forth with him on the youth baseball stuff. So yeah. I'm really super into yeah. that. I, you know, that's a man after my heart. I think that's super cool. So yeah, hopefully, um, hopefully at some point we could all get together when, uh, when he gets to San Francisco and you're in town and that'd be great. That'd be great. You know, Hey, look, you know, I'd, I'd love it. I'd love it. You know what I mean? You know, needless to say, they got to concentrate on the game or whatever. But, you know, if you can make it up, you know, maybe me and you and him go grab some lunch and just bullshit the whole time. Absolutely. Uh, last question here from Wes. He says, did Bobby Cox have a shit box like Lasorda did? I did not see a Bobby Cox shit box. I did see a Tommy Lasorda shit box a bunch. So I think Bobby has a little bit more class than Tommy. Sorry. You know, my favorite thing about Bobby Cox, though, is that. He wore nails. That's right. Fucking spikes. The manager wearing metal. Oh, he did. Oh, he did. He definitely did. And and the one thing that I respected about Bobby Cox, besides being such a great manager, he always went to bat for his player. If his player was being dissed, all right, he was out there and he would get ejected and make sure the player stayed in the game so that the player could freaking change the outcome of the game. But he would go to bat for the player every time. And I really respect that about Bobby Cox. Damn fucking right. I talked to Tim Hudson. He said best manager he's ever played for. It's not even close. Yep. Yep. Loved yep. Him. Absolutely love him. All Look. right, dude. I, I, I got, I got a roll. Um, next week we on next week. We're on. All right. If you're listening, we'll, we'll figure we'll figure out what it is about next week. But we're on. You ain't kidding. Major League Baseball starts tomorrow, 3 a.m. Pacific time. By the way, if you're listening on Apple or Spotify, please leave a review, five stars, if you're feeling uh, generous. And if you could write a little something, hey, we'd appreciate that too. Don't be afraid to tell a friend. And every Tuesday night, we. Go ahead and record these Deuces Wild live on No Filter Network. Like Barty, you can knock, you can come in, you can ask questions. Uh, in the meantime, the Daily Hustle will also be in the Deuces Wild feed, talking shop and bullshitting uh, just about Monday through Friday, uh, keeping you up to date on all. Yeah, the- make sure, make sure with uh, with the old uh, you know tournament starting. Place your bets from our title sponsor. Uh-oh. Line. That's right, dude. All right, my new internet shit out anyway. Thrill. Last thing. See ya.